Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? There's probably a lot of people that don't speak Spanish in here, but uh, it's a great pleasure to be here with you today. Last presentation of the day, last presentation of the conference. So, uh, you know, good luck. A hand of applause for you guys for holding on until now. And what I want to do today is really share with you some of my experience and our knowledge on what makes startup hubs successful. And I'm going to focus on the case study of Campus London, which we started two years ago. But I hope that you can take some of these lessons and apply that to your startup ecosystem, whether you're in Barcelona or any other uh, startup hub around Europe or around the world. So as mentioned, I'm the head of Google for Entrepreneurs Europe and Campus London. And I'm going to talk a little bit about both, but if you have any questions, please don't be shy at the end of the presentation and feel free to ask. So let's start with London. When we talk about London, the first thing that comes to mind, what's, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Shout. The Queen. All right, two points for you. <laughs> That's true, the Queen. What else? Rain. Okay. Some people will say Champions League or football. And some people will say fish and chips. But no one said startups. And I'd like to argue that that's changing very, very quickly because the UK has what I call the trifecta for startup success, individual startup success. One, we have access to talent with some of the best universities in the world set up in London and down the road in Cambridge and Oxford. We also have international talent flowing into the city. We also have access to capital. You know, not just the city of London, which has a huge concentration of wealth, but also uh, capital from abroad, and 40% of venture capital in Europe is going towards London. And finally, we have access to ideas that maybe a few years ago, you know, Europe was labeled as the copycat center of the world, mainly thanks to three German brothers that built a fantastic business uh, cloning startups from the US, but that's changing very, very quickly. And also, I want to give them credit for building fantastic businesses uh, with those ideas. But we have original ideas coming out of Europe and really changing and disrupting their industries. So I don't have to convince you of that. You know, other people are saying this all the time, and you can see some of the headlines. And, and really, you can say that like London now has a frothy uh, and successful startup ecosystem. So I want to shift away from the success of the individual startup and talk a little bit more about the ecosystem and what, what makes ecosystems successful. So here comes Campus London. And usually when I describe campus, I say that if there was an equivalent between real estate on one hand and software on the other hand, campus would be an open source building. It's like an operating system for startups that's physical where we work together with partners and the community to power this ecosystem. So like any other operating system or platform, you know, think about, let's say, Android, for example. You have the operating system, and then you have apps. And some of these apps are great partners that you can see here on the board, whether it's co-working spaces, accelerators, uh, Startup Weekend, and other community players that help power the startup ecosystem. So we do a lot of great work together with these partners, and there's a lot of stuff that is operated through Google as well, which we can call it the Google Apps, and I'll talk a little bit about our programs. So now that we're talking about ecosystem, what do you need in order to make a startup ecosystem successful? You know, what are the components? We all, need, we all know that we need startups, we need angels, we need investment, we need mentors, customers, etc. But there's, there are three components that I see on the high level that determine the success of a startup ecosystem. And this was originally written about Silicon Valley um, by Paul Graham, by the way, which I'm sure you probably heard of. And I think that he probably thinks that actually this can't happen anywhere else. But as we start talking about these components, you'll see that it, it very much applies to London. And I hope that it applies to Barcelona, um, to Tel Aviv, and other cities, you know, wherever you're from. So the first thing you need is environment. An environment I divided into two. And we'll talk a little bit about physical environment and maybe spiritual environment. The second criteria is numbers or density. So you need a lot of density to make a startup hub successful. And we talk about why it's important. And the third one is the magic dust, or you know, this like, fairy dust that you sprinkle over a startup that makes some startups successful. Um, and this happens in very you know, successful startup ecosystem and is a factor of the previous two. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So let's start with an environment. So environment starts from physical environment. Startups want to be around startups. You know, if you're trying to innovate, 
in a city of butchers or a city of lawyers and you're doing a technology startup and you're the only one, good luck to you. It's going to be much, much tougher because you need this to have the right environment and be surrounded uh, by this productive, collaborative environment of people that are going through the same thing, etc. So this is just a picture from the uh, message board at campus. We empty it once a week and then 48 hours it looks like this again. So physical environment, it's important. Uh, you can also see that there's, you know, co-working space, there's a cafe, there's an event space that we let anyone from the startup community um, host their events at campus for free. And this sort of physical environment really leads to a high level of collaboration and energy that translate into the next part, which is the, let's call it a spiritual environment or an environment of learning, collaboration, sharing, etc. One of the feedbacks that I heard from Spanish entrepreneurs and players in the startup ecosystem in Spain is that actually the culture here is not one that you would go and like share with everyone what you're working on and give them feedback on what they're doing and give them ideas, etc. Uh, but this is something that I think is necessary uh, to develop a successful startup ecosystem and this is something that's very prevalent at campus. So how do we foster this environment of sharing and learning and what do we do about it? So these are some of our programs. I'll give you an example of a few of them. Campus EDU is our education program for startups. It, ha it has three pieces. One is a mentorship program where every week Googlers or Google employees come to campus and mentor startups one-on-one -on -one, and every week we change the topic. For example, last Friday it was on monetization. The week before, it was on uh, marketing and advertising. The week before, it was on product management. And different mentors come every week. And to give you an example of the volume, uh, in 2013, we've done more than 1,000 sessions between Googlers and startups at campus alone. The second part is inspirational speeches and, and talks by people like Eric Schmidt, Guy Kawasaki, Steve Blank. And they come and inspire startups, and we try to capture all of that broadcast and post it on the campus YouTube channel. The third part is learning days or classes, bringing the best of the startup ecosystem. There's so much goodwill out there of people from universities, from accelerators, from bigger startups that are mature and want to give back. And we try to teach the startups a skill that they need when they need them. Then we also have a program called Campus for Moms, um, which I particularly love, which is essentially an accelerator for moms on maternity leave or with young kids who want to become entrepreneurs or launch a startup and we give them really the best tools that are out there and the best mentors and, and teachers that are out there and enable them to launch their ideas and come together in teams in order to become entrepreneurs. It's the only time where I actually spoke on stage and someone pulled my pants. The babies, not the moms. Um, so diversity and, and closing the gender gap is something that we really care about. And maybe this is why in the surveys that we run at campus, we find that there's more than double the industry average of women working at campus and they feel very comfortable doing so. Maybe it's, uh, <clears throat> maybe it's because we really care about it, but actually, you know, they don't want the people that are helping me run these women programs at campus, they said that they don't want to call themselves like women at or geekettes or you know, ladies in tech or something like that. So we're still trying to find out the balance of how do we help close the gender gap without putting too many labels on it. So these are just some of the pictures of the mentoring sessions. We do have investor office hours, and this is the campus for moms and the youngest entrepreneurs I've ever seen. And environment doesn't only have to be about work. How many of you heard about tech bikers? Okay, none, great. This is the new audience for me then to share this. So two years ago, we had a crazy idea of what if we could leverage the passion and the commitment of the startup ecosystem and actually enforce, you know, use this for good and use this like force for good. So we organized something called Tech Bikers, which is a bike ride from Paris to London that includes entrepreneurs, VCs, techies, accelerators, people from the startup ecosystem, and we raise money for charity uh, by each rider in order to do this, this cycle. And so far, we've done it for two years in a row. We double the number of participants each year. We're going to do it again this year. And we already started uh, two schools and four libraries and gave uh, scholarships for 4,000 girls in the developing world to have access to education. So these sort of activities bring the community together. 
it creates this sort of like environment of learning and sharing, but it also does something that gives back to the community. And we're always looking to expand and volunteers, etc. So if you're interested, go to techbikers.com and please volunteer. So we talked about environment and why it's important to have the right environment, but startup ecosystems need numbers or density in order to be successful. So what do I mean by density? If you throw a stone in Tel Aviv, you're very likely to hit an entrepreneur. It's the sort of density that exists in Silicon Valley and in startup hubs like, um, like Israel, etc., where you need to have this sort of density because startups are designed to grow, right? If you're a startup and you're starting to get traction, you need more users, you need more developers, you need more designers, then you need more mentors, maybe you need you know, like more people to put money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you need this sort of um, ecosystem to grow in order to fuel the growth. So density of network is actually really, really important. It's not enough to just have the components. You need to have enough of it. What we've learned with campus is that although it's a physical building, it created this density of network of bringing everyone under one roof to one place and consistently interacting with each other. And the, the way that we were able to get to these numbers, and I'll share some of them uh, in a second, it's because we embrace this principle of openness. And we believe that open will win. This is actually one of our innovating principles at Google. So you recognize some of these logos on the screen. Anyone want to shout what they are? All right. You're tired. <laughs> Uh, Android and Chromium, which is the open source project for Chrome. And this is something that, you know, not only we do as a company, but we also do it um, at campus. So this sort of openness let us ar arrive to these numbers. So we had more than 1,000 startups helped last year alone. Um, and I'm talking not just about the office hours, like additional programs. We held more than 1,100 events at campus. Um, there's 28,000 members that are registered to work from campus to give you an idea of how did it change? In January the previous year, we had 8,000 members. So that's more than a 300% growth in just one year. And an interesting stat is that I asked the cafe downstairs, how many cups of coffee did you sell in year one? And they, they, they had a hard time calculating, but they told me about 90,000 cups of coffee. So I believe that there's a correlation between innovation and coffee, and we have pretty damn good coffee. So that can give you a sense of like what ideas are coming out from campus. So we can talk about numbers and startups without actually mentioning some of the companies. And I hope that you recognize some of the names. This company is called Just Add Zero. They're actually creating a smartphone made of bamboo. And the screen is still a touch screen, but the casing is made of bamboo. And I can guarantee you that no employee is committing suicide in this factory. This is a Spanish startup called Trady. And they're doing something really cool, which is understanding your traits or your character based on your social graph. So they can use this data and then sell it to employers and use it for screening, etc., to understand how creative you are, etc. This is a company called AdBrain, and they came out of Entrepreneur First, which is one of our partners. And AdBrain is doing multi-screen advertising, and they just came out of university and raised a million in seed three months after launching their company, which is pretty incredible. This is Say Duck. They do augmented reality shopping, and the first use case is furniture. So if I wanted to get a new sofa for this stage, I could essentially change the entire IKEA catalog on my phone. And if I don't like that, I can change provider and see how the furniture would look on the stage. And the last one is ITs, which is a startup that is putting Wi-Fi on all London black cabs. And the way that they're paying for it is by having this like geo-targeted advertising on the roof of the cab, which is really exciting and disruptive. And these are three guys that in, are in very early stage, either just launched or about to launch. And this is the sort of numbers that I'm talking about. So these are just five out of like hundreds of startups that work from campus every day. So what's the secret? What's this chance or serendipity element? What's the, what's the magic dust that makes some startups succeed and some fail? Well, the truth is that there is no secret. This is a picture from the cafe of campus, and it's pretty typical. It's always full. And this is the secret. When you have smart, passionate, talented people coming together consistently under one roof, and you give them a reason to interact with each other, and you give them the tools and the content to learn, 
you create this sort of magic. So there's not a day that goes by that I don't meet interesting people that I learned from or people that I can make a connection between or you know, help uh, a startup get to the next level just by having a conversation. And this is something that you don't necessarily need to be at campus to do, but I highly encourage you to adopt it as kind of like a way of being if you're in the startup ecosystem. And we do this just uh, much beyond co-working or, or mentorship or education. Uh, you know, we, startups come to campus to get things done. That's what they tell us that they appreciate the most. So rather than working from their dorm, you know, they find that like being in the campus environment helps them be more productive and get things done, raise the profile of their startup, network, learn, connect with new people, etc. So where does it fit in the big picture? So as I mentioned, I'm the head of Google for Entrepreneurs Europe, and Google for Entrepreneurs is a team at Google that's responsible to empower entrepreneurs and startup communities. Usually the way that I explain it, I said Google Ventures, which you sit under, is investing in startups for equity, and Google for Entrepreneurs invests in startup ecosystems. And we do this all around the world. So we had more than 60 efforts so far in 110 countries. And we touched more than 300,000 entrepreneurs last year alone. And a lot of the work that we do is, um, is really help empower entrepreneurs through partnerships, programs, and products. So to give you an example, this is just a map or of places where we have activities around the world. Startup Weekend, which I'm sure you're familiar with, it's a great organization that organizes um, a range of events and activities that are essentially designed to spread entrepreneurship. So some people ask or say that, you know, is entrepreneurship, are you born with it or can you learn it? And I say that entrepreneurship is not hereditary, it's contagious. So a Kaufman Institute study that came out a few months ago showed that you're 30% more likely to become an entrepreneur if you know an entrepreneur, if you tried it yourself. And Startup Weekend, as an example, holds this 54-hour 50 hour events uh, in more than 350 cities around the world. And thousands of people participate in these events. And then from their studies, they find that more than 50% of the people either quit their job or join a startup or start a startup within a year of, a of attending a Startup Weekend. So this is an example of the work that we do through partners, and we help uh, power Startup Weekend globally. This is just a range of some of our partnerships around the world. And as I mentioned, some of the partners can be accelerators or programs. Some of the partners are dedicated to diversity or closing the gender gap for women in tech. And we also have like, physical spaces and own and operated spaces. So apart from Campus London, which I've already mentioned, we have a campus in Tel Aviv and we have partner spaces in other places in Europe like Numa in Paris, in Silicon Sentier, and the factory in Berlin which is a really exciting space that it's going to open uh, in June this year. So our work is not just limited to partnerships and physical spaces. We also um, create great content to educate and inspire entrepreneurs. One example is the Online Learning Center, which you can see if you go to google.com slash entrepreneurs. And another example is the hangouts that we have with thought leaders in the startup industry. So the hangout that we've held with Elon Musk and Richard Branson, for example, which was essentially a live chat with entrepreneurs from all over the world with these two great entrepreneurs, uh, was one of the most popular hangouts of all time. And I'm saying more popular than even like a hangout with Obama or Lady Gaga, etc., which is something to be said about entrepreneurship these days. And finally, another part of the work that we do is we work very closely with the developer relations team, which is a team at Google that's responsible of helping people that choose Google platforms to be the most successful in the world doing what they do. So this is not a requirement for our work as Google for Entrepreneurs, meaning that even when we do mentoring or teaching, etc., cetera, um, we are happy to help any startup regardless of what platform you choose to develop. But if you choose to develop on Google tools, we have the best people in the world to help you, the people that are developing Android, Chrome, Google Cloud, etc. And their mantra is keep calm and RTFM, does anyone know what RTFM means? It means read the fantastic manual. Or if you're a geek, you can replace the F with something more fun. Uh, so if you, if you are an entrepreneur or you are in a startup accelerator or something like that, uh, please 
go to one of these links and you can find a lot of resources on how you can work with us and what sort of help we provide. You don't have to take any of what I said from me. You're welcome to try it yourself. If you're ever in London, please stop by. The link is campuslondon.com and anyone is uh, welcome to register as a member and working from the cafe and attending the events is 100% free. With that, I'll leave it for questions. Thank you very much. Who's going to be the first brave one? All right. Thanks for the honk. <laughs> no problem. Thanks for your, your vision. And I wanted to ask you two, two small questions. One is how you check, how you, how you apply, and how you advise new startups to, to join. As you say, you have one Spanish a company there, mm -hmm. that it means these guys move from beautiful Spain to rainy London for a reason. Mm -hmm. So if you can explain what's... what's okay, so you're asking like, how do we choose startups? How do we work with startups? Um, so it's a simple question, complicated answer. There's multiple ways we work with startups. So for example, any startup, anyone can register to work from campus for free, from the cafe. And all they have to do is sign up, create a profile, and then we give them a code and they come with this code and they can work from campus. And there's 28,000 people that have done this already. Um, and then you can apply for co-working space and rent a desk. And you know, unfortunately, we have limited space and startups apply and our partner Tech Hub helps us select the startups that are building a product. So we're always prioritizing teams of people that either already have a product or are about to launch a product, but the important thing is that they're you know, trying to solve a problem through technology uh, in an innovative, creative way versus, you know, like service providers, etc. And then we have accelerators, and the accelerators have their own selection criteria. Every three months, we've rotated a different accelerator on the third floor. So at the moment, we have Emerge Education Labs, which is an education accelerator that's affiliated with the Oxford University. Before that, we had Oxygen, which was an accelerator from Birmingham that have a much smaller startup ecosystem, so it's mixing the two together, um, and so on and so forth. And then we have SITCAMP on the fourth floor, which is a pan-European accelerator, which I hope you heard about. And they have the largest footprint of early stage investing in Europe, and they have a whole set of application process because they do mini events all around Europe. And Trady, the Spanish startup, was one of them. So they applied to SITCAMP, got selected, went to SITCAMP week, received an investment, and then they came to work from campus for three months. So there's a range of activities where people can apply and interact with us. And plus, any startup is welcome to apply to host an event, and we'll host it for free if it's for the startup community. Any startup is welcome to apply for mentorship and attend one of the 1,000, 1,100 events we had uh, at campus every given year. Anyone else? No? Cerveza? <laughs> All right, if there's no more questions, uh, you can f feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or email. Thank you very much. Easy, thanks a lot again. Thank you very much, Easy.